Hey, Shalom, Shalom, all praises, honor, glory goes to Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone, peace and blessings to you, fellow brothers, pushing out this word in truth and sincerity, Shabbat Chanak. Uh, just coming back at you with another lesson to the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Rakakwadash. And as uh, we know and understand, we are uh, definitely in the last days. The latter end of the last days, okay, in which the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His Son, Yahweh Shai, is coming to destroy, okay, <clears throat> this rulership under the hand of Esau, Edom, as well as bring salvation to the elect, okay, the remnant of the nation of Israel, which are you black, Hispanic, Native Americans that are believing on the names of Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai, and doing the works. Now, I have this uh, chapter here, Revelation 7. We'll just see uh, where the spirit uh, take, takes takes us. Uh, I didn't really have anything in particular I wanted to go into. I was reading this chapter. I was going in the book of Revelation. You know, I started uh, earlier. You know, I start reading in, in uh, 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 chapter 7. I was just thinking about the destruction, how the destruction is going to come once the elect is completely sealed. That's when all hell is going to break loose. Now, the apostle Elder Tahar, he said he believes the, uh, <clears throat> the the elect are sealed, which that could be the case. That definitely could be the case. Or we a hey, damn near the elect is fully sealed. You know, certain things that the Most High got to do, you know, certain, you know, few prophecies that we're looking for and that we're keeping our eyes out. But, hey, at any given moment, you know, things can just break out. You know, what, what, what uh, you know. When well the power when 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 the elect get that power, okay, certain men that's gonna get that power. You gonna have a lot of people get sealed when they when they believe uh, on believe on Yah Basham Shai through that power, man. So that hey, that's that's the sealing of the elect, and ultimately the Most High knows all those who are you know elated to be delivered. But let me just read this, and we'll just see how the Spirit uh, takes takes us. This is Revelation seven and one. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four, four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And that, that wind is speaking about the destruction, that, uh, <clears throat> that nuclear wind, that nuclear fire. So you have angels, okay, in the spiritual world, uh, uh, what you would call the fourth dimension, right, in the heavens that are spiritually holding back this nuclear uh, war, okay, from Russia, uh, Iran, you know, China, all these different countries, even the EU, that are going to turn on America in these last days, okay, and we already hear rumors of, you know, uh, the bear, Russia, we hear rumors of, you know, NATO, you know, talking against America, and these things are only going to pretty much spill over into all-out nuclear war and this is what this is going into okay let me bring real quick let's go to revelation 11 11 and 14 revelation 11 and 14 the second woe is past that second woe meaning that second war okay the uh the world uh world war ii is past and behold the third woe cometh quickly so from I already know, but World War II, World War II year, just for edification so you know, right? Started in 1939 and ended in 1945. Okay, so from 1945 up until now, was that uh, about 50, what, 60, 80, 80 years? Is that 80 years? Around almost around 70, 75 years, 80 years from World War, uh, from World War uh, Two. All right, and we're already, you know, people are already speaking about World War Three. Okay, if my math is right, around seventy-five years, close to 70, 80 years since World War Two uh, 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 ended. So the, the scriptures say that the third world, the third World War, it it comes quickly. Okay, so we're, we're right there. 
we're definitely right there. Okay, now you, you can be sleep, you can be in gross darkness and, and scoff at these things, but it's going to come a point to where everybody's going to know this. Everybody's going to hear that that rumor that's going to turn into actual all out, uh, you know, all out war, a hot war. And some experts say that we're in a cold war. OK, cold wars lead to hot wars. OK, economic wars lead to hot wars. OK, proxy wars lead to, to hot wars. You should know all these terms. OK. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth. Neither the sea nor the trees, because when this destruction comes, it's going to wipe everything clean. Till we have sealed the servants of our power in their forehead. Okay, and here the blue letter even has the 144,000. And we're pretty much great millstone. We're the only ones really speaking about the 144,000 and uh, the elect, because that's what it's about. It's not about everybody. Okay, there's a, there's a lot of uh, spirits that were created in vain. Well, let me bring this scripture out really quick. You know, uh, what scripture is that? That's Second Ezra. Let me see. Maybe the eighth chapter or the ninth chapter. We'll just look. Right. Right. Let me just read this right here. Second Ezra's uh, uh, eight and and one. And he answered me saying, "The Most High has made this world for many." That's why the majority of the people of the earth, you know, they're, you know, they're content with, you know, th th how things are going. They might have certain, because of course we're in the last day, so people are mourning and complaining. But for the most part, there was a time where people were doing good, man. They, they were okay. You know, they, okay, if I work hard enough, I can make it in this society, especially here in Babylon the Great. Okay, maybe not so much in different parts of the earth, you know, these third world countries. But prior to these countries being so-called third third war, uh, uh, they were doing pretty good until Esau came and messed up, messed up the land, messed up the old path, the old way. All right. So the most high he's made this world for many, many people. That's why you don't have a whole bunch of people speaking about th this word. But the world to come for few. OK, all these celebrities all these entertainers, all these rich men, all these different merchants, these great merchants of the earth that that have waxed rich. Okay, through the especially through the abundant abundant delicacies here in Babylon the Great, you know, hey, people are, are you know, they they have enjoyed the uh, the so-called earth, even though it's all messed up, even though they're destroying it at the same time. But the world to come, the new, the new heaven and the new earth that we're looking for, that we're hastening, okay? And before that can come, the destruction has to come. So that's what we're reading here, the destruction. But the Lord said, hey, look, don't, don't touch nothing. Don't tell them angels, don't do nothing. Until the servants, they have that, the wa. Okay, they have that. Let me read verse, seven, uh, verse three again. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads yeah the heavenly father's uh, seal um which you can read in um ezekiel the ninth chapter set a mark that mark is talking about the exemption from judgment okay and let me let me go to verse four and i heard the number of them which were sealed and there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of israel and these are the prophets that are, that are being raised up through the four corners of the earth. OK, uh, speaking these words. And it's crazy, too, because you got you got, uh, you know, men being raised up in these countries. OK, like Arabia, you know, uh, different parts of South and Central America, you know, Italy, you know, uh, Africa. Uh, the Philippines. That's all part of the Heavenly Father's army being raised up in these last days. And Esau doesn't know what to do. OK, he's right now he's plotting against the children of Israel. He's, he's plotting against the prophecy. He doesn't want this prophecy to come to pass. OK, let me let me read. 
of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. And this proves too that it's not, you. this is not for all nations. It says uh, for the children of Israel. Now we'll, we'll get the understanding um, with the multitude when we go down, when we read down. Okay, what that multitude was. Because they'll say, oh, look, see, it's the multitude out of all out of all nations. But let's continue. And uh, and the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben, Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Nap Naphtali or Naphtali were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi uh, were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Ishakar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulun were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph, which is Ephraim, were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. See? So that those are the 12 tribes. And we have the 12 tribes signed through the Spirit. Okay, the Spirit of uh, Hopthorn, uh, the elders... Okay, the, uh, the, the uh, high priest, Ariah, okay, and he, you know, the spirit came to him and, and broke that tribe, that, that 12 tribe uh, uh, sign down, which had to be broken down in order for the prophecies to come to pass. And after this, I beheld in low a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongue, stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. So it says a great multitude that no man can number of all nations and kindreds and people. Let's get another scripture. If I can remember, um, I think it's Ezekiel, maybe 11. Give me a second. There's, mo there's multiple scriptures. Right, Ezekiel 11, and I'll start at, uh, well, well, I'll start at 14, and we'll read down. It says, Promise of Restoration. Okay, it's the title that the Blue Litter got, that they put. And we're coming into that, that promise of restoration. Restoration of what? Like, if you have a house, okay, uh, you want to, or, or let's say, um, like a sword, like an old sword. Say, like an old samurai sword. And you'll bring it to, you know, somebody to restore it, to bring it back to its, its, its pristine state or even better. Okay. You can't restore something that, that wasn't yours. Okay. That wasn't broken down. When, when have these nations been broken down? When, when has their, um, they, they've been taken out of their land and, and, and beat and put in slavery. And now they have, now they're calling themselves different names. OK, that that happened in particular to the nation of Israel, man. And that's the that's the uh, the prophecy. And we'll read it. Why? Why uh, that when we go back into Revelation 11, just to get more understanding. And again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, son of man, thy brethren, even thy brethren, the men of thy kindred and all the house of Israel. Holy are they unto whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said. Get you far from the Lord unto us is this land given in possession. Therefore say, thus said the Lord power, although I have cast him far off among the heathen. See, that's why they were, um, when you go back, let's read that again in Revelation 7. And it says, uh, 7 and 9, and beheld, and this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations. See? And kindreds and people and tongue, right? So let's go back. Thus said the Lord power, although I have cast them far off among the heathen, and although I have scattered them among the countries, see? Yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. So, you know, these different churches that are popping up all around the world, starting here in america in the different states okay because each state is, is as a country okay well you have the united states right the united states really each 
each uh, state is really its own little country, but they come under the banner of the federal government. They say, okay, the Fed, uh, DC, you're gonna you're gonna reign over us, okay? And then you see these little churches springing up, okay? You got churches on the West Coast, LA, uh, San Francisco, Seattle, you know, uh, uh, you and you got Arizona, you know, pretty much every state. Okay, Texas. You got different different um uh, 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 churches in Texas, different churches in Florida. These are those little sanctuaries because the Most High He scattered us amongst the heathen. Therefore, say thus said the Lord Power, I will even gather you from the, from the people, see, and assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered. Because once we were scattered within those countries. And with with uh, and among those people, we started to do what? We started to blend in. We started to adopt the customs. We started to uh, marry and intermingle. Okay, and call ourselves after the name of the heathens. Okay, because that was all part of the Most High, you know, uh, taking our heritage away from us. But at the end, as as the Lord said, He's going to do what? Let's read verse seventeen again. Therefore, say thus. Thus said the Lord power, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered and I will give you the land of Israel. Has this happened yet? No. Okay. The, the land of Israel was promised to the Israelites. Okay. When the Israelites will come into the land of Israel. Okay. There will be peace on earth. Okay. All nations will flow unto the land of Israel where the Israelites are at. This has not, this has not happened. Now you can go down into go uh, into the promise how the most high is gonna put that fleshly heart upon us, okay? In us. But let's go back here. And we can go more scriptures. There's a lot more scriptures to, to bring this point home, right? About the scattering of the nation of Israel. Okay. Let's read verse uh nine again in Revelation 7. And that and uh, it says, After this I beheld and lo a great multitude which no man can number of all nations because Jake was scattered amongst all nations. That was a, that was the prophecy. That was a curse that, that, that came upon us and kindreds and people and tongues. Okay. Cause you got Jake all around the, all around the world speaking different tongues. You got Jake that's from Nepal. Okay. Jake that's in China. Jake that's amongst Ham. Jake, that's amongst, uh, you know, all these nations, amongst uh, Edom, okay, stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with the right robes and palms in their hands. But the prophecy says that the Lord, he is going to pull them, take them out of those lands, the elect of, of, of Jake, okay, because you're going to have uh, Jake that's going to be looking like the other nations, but the most High going to destroy their ass because they're not part of that number. Right. But they'll but they're but they are Israelites and they're going to come back in the kingdom of heaven. OK. So hey, a lot of a lot of Jake's going to bug out when you start seeing, you know, people that look, you know, like Chinese and, you know, uh, you know, pure Africans and and, and 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 Iranians, you know, the Persians saying that they're Israelites calling on the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Okay, that's going to be a, a great work. That, that's a work. Remember, that's another work that we're looking for, that the Most High is going to uh, establish in this, in this earth. Because all everybody's going to hear about this Israelite thing. It's going to be, it, it's going to be worldwide, okay? All nations are going to hear about the Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, okay? Before the coming of the day of the Lord. And you're going to have certain of our people that are within those nations Something's going to click, okay, because it is a spirit that dwelleth within them. Okay, well, let's bring that out really quick. Uh, Romans 8, okay, so-called Chinese and Japanese, okay, Arabs and, you know, different particular nations of the islands, you know, the Pacific Islanders, you know, Filipinos, Southeast Asians. You're going to have certain of them, they're going to they're gonna say, no, I'm an Israelite. I can feel I'm an Israelite because the most high is going to. He's going to uh, uh, turn, he's going to amplify his spirit in the earth. Okay. And if you're an Israelite, it doesn't matter what you look like. Romans 8 and 16, the spirit itself bear witness with our spirit 
that we are the children of the Most High. See, we don't need to go to a document, say, no, here we, we are the Israelites. And that's what Esau, that's how he gets you, you carnal people. Oh, well, the, you know, they were they were done away with the documents. We can't trace back, you know, your lineage to the Israelites. And he don't really want to touch the Israelites. That's like a topic he doesn't really touch if he fully doesn't have control over it. He likes to skip over that, but he can't. He in these last days, he's not able to skip over that because it's constantly in his face, constantly in his face. Okay, people are asking him questions. He now has to, you know, pretty much make mention of these things. Okay, uh, verse ten in Revelation seven, and cry with a loud voice, saying, "Salvation to our power which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb." And all the angels stood round about the throne and the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces faces, and worshiped the Most High, saying, Amen, blessings and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our power forever and ever. Amen. It says, And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? See, because you're going to have a whole bunch of uh, men, women, and children that are not going to be looking like Israelites, so to speak. And like, wh where where all these people come from? So he asks a rhetorical question. Okay, the elder, the elder knew. All right, and I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. So John's like, Hey, you know? So I don't, I don't know. I'm, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to find out. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. Right. Let's go to let's go to Jeremiah 30. OK, let's go to Jeremiah 30. OK, that's that. That's that great tribulation. That's that Jacob's trouble. OK, the Most High is going to deliver certain men, women and children. OK, from Jacob's trouble. OK, starting here in America and then also throughout the four corners of the earth. OK, because Jacob's trouble is going to be in, in South America. It's going to be in Central America. It's going to be in. And in the Middle East, okay, it's going to be in China, mainly here in America, because that's where the bulk of the Israelites are. Yet, this is going to be a global thing, just like this global lockdown, okay? The 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 agenda for the elites is global, okay? It's not oh, are we just we gonna take control of America? They got America. They want that karagma and everybody in the earth, just like they want everybody to get jabbed up. Jeremiah 30 and 7, alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. See, so those those um, peoples that were arrayed in white robes and those psalm, those palms in their hands, those were they who came out of great tribulation. Those were they who were saved from Jacob's trouble. OK. And have washed their robes and were and made them white in the blood of the lamb, meaning they repented. And they came back to Yah Basham al Shah in these last days. Even if even if it's at right before the last trump, okay, in the in the latter part of the eleventh hour, the last hour, okay, you're gonna have certain men, women, and children be delivered just because they believed on Yah Basham al Shah in the at the last minute. And they're gonna be delivered, they're gonna be saved, okay. I'm continue. There, uh, therefore, are they before the throne of the Most High and serve him day and night in his temple? And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. Yeah, and this is this is you know after the destruction of Babylon the Great, because before the destruction of Babylon the Great, we're about to go through great tribulation. Okay, that hour of temptation. Let's bring that out really quick. That hour of temptation is coming, and that hour of temptation is to Temp, I believe it's either Revelation 2 or Re Revelation 3. We'll see. This is good too. This might, let's read this. Revelation 2 and 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried. And ye shall have tribulation 10 days. That's just a number of times. That, the, that Jacob's trouble is going to pretty much fully manifest. Okay. Be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. So you're going to have certain peoples, certain Israelites out of, out of all nations. 
okay, come back to Yah Bashem Al Shah in these last days and pretty much overcome and be delivered and be saved. Let's see what Revelation 3 says. Right, this is it right here. But that's the precept there also. Revelation 3 and 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. See, and this is what we're preaching, man. We're preaching to, to get you prepared, to get your mind fully prepared for when this day comes. Okay, when there is no Bibles. Okay, when there is no internet. Okay, when there's crazy things happening in the earth. When your faith is being, when your faith and your, your, your reality is going to be tested. Okay, and if you have not been storing up your, your riches in heaven, if you have not been storing up your faith now, if you have not been praying to Yah Bashem Shai now to build you up, when, when these things go down, and they're going to happen quick too, because the devil, the, the scriptures say the devil's going to come in like a flood. Watch, watch videos of, of flash floods. Flash flood, floods, excuse me. They take people by surprise because it, it, it damn near happens instantly. That's how the devil's going to come in. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, what we're gonna have to suffer. I well, we just read in Revelation ten. Hey, when you get when you get hemmed up and get thrown in one of these detention centers, be faithful unto death. Okay, that's having the Lord's patience. So if you have the Lord's patience, it says, "I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation." See, which shall come upon all the world. See, all the world. Everybody's about to be tempted. Okay, with this devil's device. And you can see people are already, um, you know, caved in with this whole jab thing. How much more when, you know, there's actual diseases. I just did a video. I just put it up. It might have, it, it might be coming up pretty soon. Or it, it might have just came up about, you know, uh, black fungus out there in, um, in India. So what happens when, you know, people actually start dying of different diseases? Where's your faith going to be? Are you going to give in to the devil? And then he's going to come with that karagma like it's going to save the earth. You have to do this. He's going to write it into his law. He's going to set up certain things in the earth, catastrophic events, you know, black swan events, so-called fl false flags to justify, you know, him coming down like coming down so hard. OK, and to try to deceive you. So this this hour of temptation, which is what a particular time. All right. It's going to come upon the whole world to try them that dwell upon the earth, right? It's to test you, to test uh, uh, if you believe on the Heavenly Father. Okay, uh, the Lord said, I'm going to save you, okay? Don't take that. I'm going to destroy you. If you take this, I'm going to destroy you. But you're going to have a lot of people that are going to give in, a lot of jakes that are going to give in. Behold, I come quickly, just as we read in Revelation 11 about the second woe and the third woe coming quickly. Because Yahweh is coming in the third woe. Okay? Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown. See? Let's go back to Revelation 7. Let's finish that up. Uh, 7 and 16. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun, uh, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. And if you go back to Ezekiel 11, we didn't we didn't read down. But this is going into that, how the Most High is going to put that, that fleshly heart in our, in our bodies to where we're not going to sin anymore. And we're going to be forever with our Lord. We're going to, you know, have that connection forever. Okay. And we, we're not going to have to worry about going through another Jacob's trouble. We're not going to have to worry about the devil, uh, the Edomites being over us, the other nations being over us, our people being completely bugged, bugged the hell out. We're not going to have to worry about none of those things. For the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto everlasting fountains of water and the most high shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes. Yeah, we're going to be good in that day, man. We're going to be elated. We're going to have nothing but joy. But the Lord, he sent us away with uh, with weeping. OK, but he's going to also he's going to wipe those tears away from our eyes. All right, and we're gonna go. We're about to go through this 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 hour of temptation. Okay, that's why you know we have to really really focus in and lock in, and 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 basically to hell with this world. This world is 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 falling. Okay, it's it's plain to see that this world is done. There's no possible way that this is a continuing city. It's it's there's no possible way. Okay, and we know that the devil 
according to precepts, the devil's about to come in. He's already coming in, really. If you have uh, eyes to see, he's already uh, besieging the world right now, okay, through his policies, through his uh, compulsory uh, uh, jabs that he's going to make mandatory, okay? And we're going to keep yelling these things, but we're, we're yelling and we're screaming at the top of our lungs, uh, so to speak, okay, to prepare the elect of the nation of Israel to, cause to, to hell with two-thirds, and to hell with this world. We read in 2nd Ezra that this world was created for many. Okay? But the world to come for few. So just a quick lesson. You know, keep focus. Keep your eyes on the prize. Keep reading. The scriptures say, blessed is he that readeth. You know, and, and best believe you, th this day is going to come. We're already moving closer to that day. Every, every sun that comes up, every moon that goes down. We're one step closer to the day of the Lord. Let me bring out this last scripture, actually. Oh, I love this, this, this scripture right here. Malachi 4 1. For behold, the day cometh, see, that shall that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, said the Lord of hosts that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. This day is coming. Okay, so a, hey, well, a hey, Esau even put here, said final admonition. Basically, your final warning. Let's look at this word admonition. Give me a second. Just in a, uh, look at it in Edamon. Uh, come, let's see. A suggestion, a reminding, a admonition. That's from the Latin. From the old French, admonition, exhortation. Okay, come down here. It says to advise, warn. See? Meaning, caution or warning about future conduct based on past failures. Let's ad ad admonish. Okay, that word really goes back to admonish. It says, uh, remind, urge, exhort, warn, give warning, urge, and encourage, warn. See, from the Latin, bring to mind. Okay, remind, also warn, advise, urge. I mean, it's, it's saying the same thing, see? But it, it's, it's a warning, the final warning. Okay, and the Lord, he got his prophets out, breaking down the scriptures the correct way giving you those warnings, okay? Read, read Proverbs, the first chapter, and you see that, you know, Jake is not going to take heed to the warnings and, and what, what's going to happen. Well, look at Jake in this situation now. They're, they went into slavery. We went into slavery because Jake, ultimately, it was, it was the spirit, but Jake didn't heed to those warnings. So, hey, until next time, we'll come back with more videos. Till next time, shalom to the elect.